I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm absolutely heartbroken. All right, if you've, uh, if you've stuck in this long watching me uh, countersink and deeper and scrub parts, good on you. Today is the day. This week is the week that uh, I'm going to start putting this thing back together. This is the fun part. Uh, and, and ultimately, we're going to be able to turn this thing right side up where uh, hopefully it stays that, uh, that orientation for the life of the plane, and at least while it's on the ground, right? We're gonna start putting this thing back together, first with Clecos, then with rivets, um, and I'm gonna get right to it, but it's not without uh, some altered plans and a little bit of disappointment, but we'll get into that in a bit. For now, uh, I'm just gonna start cleaning up the garage and seeing if I can orient these parts um, and, and get them headed in the right direction. upside down. I got a couple things I want to hit. Very simple. Uh, these need some nut plates. I have matching nut plates on all the other interior ribs, uh, but we do need three on each of these side ribs. And uh, there is a attached strip that goes between this rib here and uh, the 704 upright bulkhead um, that we want to attach and rivet in before I get this flipped upside down. It's just going to make our lives a little easier and it is something that can be attached now, so I will do so. These nut plates before being installed need to have a tap run through them to, to make the screws a little easier to install. These are gonna be right up against the walls of the cabin. Well, we are once again sinking rivets, which is a great feeling. Uh, I love putting stuff together.
I felt like that was absolutely more difficult than it should have been. Um, smooth sailing from here on out, promise. All right, my next task is going to be to get the long rounds back in the aft fuselage to help us line up the forward fuselage. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Once we flip it, which is going to be a little awkward, and the sawhorse is going to, it's got a two that go kind of right where these stick down. And the sawhorse will go to about here. How are we going to flip this thing over? I'm not really sure how we're carrying this end of the mill. Are you going to flip it first or carry it? If you want to grab that end. Let you in on a little secret. See that bulkhead sitting on the back table? Yeah, this one here? That should be going in between these two pieces. Let's see how long it takes me to figure that out. So luckily I at least remembered to get the forward skin doublers in before clecoing this portion together. These go in pretty simple, uh, they simply overlay and then you squeeze a number of rivets around the spar cutout. Assembled the fuselage 
with the uh, really the central main bulkhead still on the workbench, believe it or not. So there's that. Um, turns out you can fit an amazing amount of baggage in an RV7 if you just remove most of the internal structure and the rear baggage wall. It's incredible. I could get like two full-size sets of golf clubs in there. So now that's got to be wedged in there. See if we can't try to try to get it inserted without completely disassembling the plane and then reassembling it. So yeah. That was, um, that was rough. Uh, the idea was we have the, the four and a half fuselage that are kind of interlaced like this. And I was hoping to just pull them apart just enough to sneak the bulkhead in, uh, and close everything up. Um, but I forgot what a pain it is to, to get everything aligned with that bulkhead in there. That was about as much as I could handle, uh, physically and mentally. Um, but we got it. And we got it safely, which is good. And it was very helpful to have another set of hands. Unfortunately, I think I only captured footage of a little bit of it because the, the camera ran out of batteries and I, I, I wasn't in a spot where I could uh, reset the camera. However, oh well, we're here. Uh, I'm gonna continue working through this thing. We got the forward part of, I think it's 704 in with the spacers in between there. Um, and so I think from here, we're gonna start to assemble um, the forward fuselage, uh, including riveting some pieces together as they go in. Uh, before that, I'm gonna prep a little bit of this very leading edge to make sure that um, it has a decent surface to mate to the firewall where there will be some firewall sealant uh, at a later date. Let's chat briefly on the disappointment that I've alluded to. No, it's not the fact that Vans is insolvent. That comes later. Um, the, the primer, like all the primer lately, didn't come out quite as, as well as I'd hoped. Um, a lot of the parts, it's a bit thin. Um, I think I may have thinned it too much. It's taking on that satin look. I think that's a result of the thinner I'm using. Uh, generally it's mildly inconsistent, especially when compared to other parts. Um, if this all sounds terrible, well, it's not great. Uh, so I've thought about it a lot. Um, and I, I just laid out my options. Uh, I can attempt to scrub it down either to bare metal or, or just rough it up and reprime. Um, and, and that's an option that I'm just not very fond of. I'm not confident that that's going to yield any better results. I, I'm just struggling with this primer. And uh, when I've done that with at least one piece in the past, um, I, again, I, I just have inconsistent results. Looking at it, the, the primer works from a primer standpoint. Everything has uh, adequate coverage and it's gonna protect the plane from corrosion. That is a plus. Uh, my method to, to handle this is I'm gonna keep moving forward. I'm gonna construct the cockpit. We're gonna rivet everything together. If I'm unhappy with the results, we will scotch bright it and I will shoot the entire cockpit with, with something like Jetflex White or, or there's, there's a lot of products that people have experience with and I may get some help doing it. Um, what that'll allow me to do is it'll allow me to focus on only the parts that'll be visible in the cockpit. Um, I'm not stuck trying to get every nook and cranny of a very complex part to look uniform and beautiful. It's going to be a superficial coat uh, and purely for aesthetics. I think it's the, the smartest way to move forward. To, to eliminate added weight to the plane and to get me a look I'm gonna be happy with. 
Uh, that does mean that if I if I do choose to shoot the interior, gone is that notion of having the fasteners and rivets be the traditional color, the metal color, and, and then everything else be white. Everything will just be uh, a solid color, um, which is fine. The best part is, I know that these parts are primed to protect for corrosion, and so we've got that box checked. All we're looking for now is how to get ourselves to a plane that looks cool. So the firewall has been countersunk, dimpled, it's ready to rock. Uh, and one of the initial steps we have to do, again, with getting all this riveted together, is to put the gussets uh, that I recently worked on, attach them directly to the firewall uh, when we still have access. So I'm gonna take a look and see how those fit. The first thing that we're gonna do is put this nut plate in. And we'll go on the back side. Now we'll attach the gusset down along this end only. This up here will actually get attached to uh, the auxiliary long run and the skin. One of the other aspects that the instructions have said to take care of in advance is attaching this bracket to the skin stiffener and then attaching that to the firewall. Now, as you can imagine, with the skin going here, all of this is gonna have really restricted access. My only concern is trying to maneuver this around being held on by only one rivet. Not only that, I don't know the exact angle to get it up. So, I will attach the bracket to the stiffener and we'll take both pieces, firewall and stiffener bracket, over to the plane and see if I'm able to set that final rivet by peeling the skin back. Actually, a little surprised that worked. All right. So I've got one other aspect of this that is in the plans. I never saw anything about it in the instructions. But I also just noticed it just looking at this part. Uh, we have a hole for the rudder cable. And then on the other side of that, we have a flange that sticks out. And if we project the hole for the rudder cable out, it actually impedes um, where that cable would go. And so I think we need to notch out that flange. Um, and I wish I would have known it before priming, but it should be okay. I'm simply gonna use a round file to start that hole, kind of going through where that rudder cable will go. Uh, and then I will finish it up with the old hand piece here.
All right, so I have already drilled the top two holes up here and the one through the long rod. I removed the piece, I deburred everything, I dimpled those two. This one does not require a dimple and I've got it back on here. Now remember, these two nut plates are left open because we're gonna attach those while we attach another more permanent piece. On top of all of this, we'll fit this guy and we'll get these clecoed in, then riveted in fairly soon here. Hey, welcome to another edition of Laser Cut Corners. I was hoping we were on the tail end of these, but it turns out we might still have a few ahead of us. Why is that? Well, if you're unaware, yesterday for me, uh, Vans Aircraft released an article on their website accompanied by a video uh, from Dick Van Grunsman himself, and both detail the significant financial challenges that lay ahead of Vans. I think it's, it's probably as bad as many people speculated, but far worse than they've ever indicated uh, before. In addition to that, Kit Planes also released an article that details much of the same information but also provides a little additional glimpse into some organizational changes ahead at Vans, including naming an interim CEO to take over operations. I'm not going to go into too much detail on what's included on either of those articles. I encourage you to, to go and, and take a peek at them yourself if you haven't seen them yet. How does that affect me? Well, simply put, it's probably uh, the biggest impediment to the success of this project that I face to date. Um, there's a very strong likelihood that I'm unable to obtain the remaining pieces to finish my airplane. As many are aware, I still am in need of a finishing kit as well as a firewall forward kit and the remaining parts that I have ordered uh, to replace laser cut parts within my kit. There's a very realistic chance that Vans is unable to supply these to me, uh, and if, if so, would make finishing this airplane incredibly difficult, and, and that bums me out. Um, there's, there's enough roadblocks to, to one, trying to finish uh, building an airplane financial time and otherwise, uh, and to have to combat these at the same time is pretty difficult, uh, but it is where we're at. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about how I feel about that. I think there's enough opinions floating around. I'll just keep mine off camera. Uh, for now, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to do the same thing that I have been doing, and that's build. I still have a lot of building to do. I still enjoy it thoroughly, and I still want to take this thing as far as I can. So with that in mind, I'm going to hope for the best. I'm going to do the best to protect myself and any future investment that I make in this plane. Um, and. For now, I'm going to keep riveting. So with that, let's get to it. I'm excited. Um, from here on out, it's largely just riveting all this together. And there are some order of operations, some things I have to do before others, but for the most part, I can kind of choose what I want to tackle and just hit it. Starting with these floors here, um, I'm going to get those knocked out and then the instructions suggest uh, dividing right here where the spar will be and kind of working fore and aft and, and again I'll largely follow that instruction but for the most part I can hit things that I can hit on my own saving things aside uh, that are going to require two hands or somebody to be on the outside of the aircraft and take advantage of when I have some additional help. From here on out it's just putting this thing together and then we get to turn it over and take a look at what we created. This is really cool stuff.
down and touch it up, it's gonna drive me nuts. To tell everybody it stands for Ryan, and I have to figure out why certain pieces have an L. and here because there's a gap I don't like. Okay, let's go. So when riveting the skin here, um, we wound up with a slight bulge in the bottom skin, what is right now the top skin. And I carefully tried to uh, work it flat with the rivet gun, uh, just doing small passes. And, and I got it flat to my credit, um, but I pushed it a little too far. And what happened is with this skin butting right up against it, it had nowhere to give so it curled into it and honestly i'm i'm absolutely heartbroken i have tried uh since starting the fuselage to have this area just be perfect between this joint and the conical bend here um it's a spot that i wanted to come out looking as as good as it can and now i've got this sort of disgrace here and i couldn't be more bummed um i'm gonna leave it for now uh i'm gonna hopefully get in touch with a professional or wait all the way until painting and see if there's something that they can do for this um i think it's going to take someone a whole lot more talented than me to be able to pull this out without removing everything i've done to date um and, and unriveting the whole side skin which really isn't an option for me at this point so it's going to stay. It'll be a trophy of my failure uh, for a little bit longer. Um, but I'm going to keep pushing on and we're going to continue to attack the rivets on the fuselage. Um, let's do it. Let's go. In light of the additional difficulties now facing the project, that error is seeming smaller and smaller. And just how that ding is becoming more manageable, my take on the situation at Vance has too turned a bit more optimistic. I'm hopeful I'll get the remainder of my pieces, and while there's a heightened chance now I won't, I think the chance is still pretty narrow. I hope they'll figure their stuff out just like I hope I can get that dent pulled, and I hope I'll soon be able to place an order for motor and avionics, and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I recently took a flight with some friends and it was a great opportunity to remember why I'm doing all this. Being up in the air, working with air traffic control, flying approaches, and staring at the city below really allowed for some perspective. 
Next week, we're going to work on finishing this thing up. There's very little riveting left, but I'm giving my poor neighbors some time. I'll also detail what that spacer was that I created and how I created it, for those that feel I left the important bit out. The next steps should really all be very easy, and I'll have that thing tipped up right in no time, I'm sure. Until then, thanks for watching Ryan Flies.